I'm Owen. And I'm Teresa. And we are beating back my stage four cancer with metabolic therapy. And a huge part of metabolic therapy is your diet. Right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the three best cancer killing diets. That's right, and we're gonna talk about what diet we're doing and, and what diet some other people are doing. We're gonna give you guys some resources to go investigate diet, but first, I think it's really important that you understand and that you believe that your diet can have a major impact on your prognosis. In fact, Dr. Kelly Turner, in her book, Radical Remission, identifies the nine different things that cancer survivors do, and the number one thing is radical diet change. And so I really want to encourage you uh, to understand how cancer works and then develop a diet around that so that you are nourishing your own body while you're simultaneously killing your cancer cells. Right, so you know, understanding the metabolic pathways that grow tumors is essential when deciding on the right diet plan for you. If you take a look at this image on the screen, you're gonna see this image produced by Care Oncology on all of the different pathways that grow tumor cells. For this video, we're gonna talk about three of them, and that has to do with carbohydrates, fat, and protein. And each one of these diets are gonna vary a little bit on which pathways they you know, reduce more. And as always, you should consult with your integrative doctor or oncology nutritionist to really dial in the plan that's right for you. So let's start with the first diet, which is the keto diet. Now, there's a lot of misinformation about the keto diet because it's really popular right now. It's really trendy. Yep, it's, weight it's loss, like a right. mainstream diet kind of thing. Like I'm gonna eat bacon and eggs and all this meat and I'm gonna lose weight. And there is maybe some truth to that. We'll, we can get into that later. But I think that what's missing, what you need to know about the keto diet is ketosis. You need to understand what ketosis is because the more that your body is in ketosis, the more ketones you have in your body, the less blood sugar you have in your body, and that kills cancer. Right, remembering that uh, image that we showed before, glucose is one of the biggest feeders of tumors. Let's think about it this way. When you go and get a CT scan, what does the doctor give you to drink so that the tumors show up on your CT scan? It's typically gonna be a glucose Radioactive sugar juice, right. that's what they give because you. Because it soaks it all up because it loves glucose yes. and that's how they're able to find it. So the keto diet, the biggest, biggest focus on that is to reduce the amount of glucose in your blood yeah. and you can still get the energy that you need and be able to thrive because your body has instead created ketones for energy. Yes, and ketosis is the state the human body has been in for thousands and thousands of years, right? Like it wasn't until the invention of like, eight, like the 1850s and industrial sort of revolution and Nabisco crackers and Ritz crackers and like all of these processed carbohydrates. That's when we started sort of the food pyramid and ingesting all these breads and stuff. But most people would wake up, uh, they would go to work and cut down trees for three hours and then come home and have bacon and eggs. In that type of lifestyle, you're, you're gonna be in high ketosis, which kills and, and actually helps to reduce uh, tumor cells. So here's the gist of the keto diet is that sugar eats glucose. Sugar eats, uh, uh, excuse me. Eat sugar. So the gist of the keto diet is this. Tumors eat sugar. You reduce the amount of sugar that you eat, puts your body in a state of, of being called ketosis, and that actively fights cancer cells, along with some other benefits as well, like you know, mental clarity, just general health. I, I, I sleep better. But to learn a little bit more about ketosis, go into the links in the description box and get the book Keto for Cancer by Miriam Kalamian, and also get the podcast, I put the link to it down below, on Dr. Seyfried and the metabolic approach to cancer. Now the keto diet cuts off the carbohydrate pathways that grow cancer, but tumors also grow off of another very powerful energy source and that is protein. And specifically, animal, animal protein. protein. And so some of you, certain cancers like mine, did not respond to the keto diet. The animal protein fed my cancer, and so we had to cut out animal protein. So when you're in ketosis without animal protein, you're in the second diet, which is called? The vegan keto diet. The vegan keto diet. Now when we say vegan keto, we wanna clarify, vegan, we're not talking about, you know, the philosophical dogmatic view of 
eating meat. It's purely the nutritional benefits to your body. It's a plant-based ketosis. Plant -based yeah, we eat plant-based foods. So I know for me, I was a little turned off because I, I enjoy a steak and fish and, and it's like, I'm not a vegan. Again, I, I have a lot of love for vegans. They do a lot to move the, the anti-cancer industry forward. But I just want you to know, it's a plant-based keto. And what we're doing is you're removing animal protein. And there's a couple different reasons and we can get into the details of this, but I'd rather that you check out the books by the doctors and, and, and read from, from the others. But here's sort of the gist of keto vegan. Animal protein is full of antibiotics and harmful carcinogens that are added by farmers to increase the flavor increase the size and all that kind of stuff. So that's part one. Part two, certain cancers will actually use what's in the biological real meat. So it-, it Doesn't matter any, if it's grass fed. Doesn't matter if it's grass fed, right? Like protein, animal protein stimulates mTOR production. I don't expect you to know what that means, but mTOR and IGF-1 are in meat and your the cancer eats those things. So some of you will have to get rid of animal protein. I was one of those people and it was, it was not that hard. You know why? Because I have four kids and a beautiful wife and it was simply this. Do I give up animal protein or, or do I just die eating a steak? Like there's no way. I'm gonna give up animal protein, I'm gonna beat cancer and then I'm gonna have reasonable amounts of grass-fed animal protein one day, someday soon. Right, right. Okay. And so what we really do is you really take the keto diet and instead of the cheese and the eggs and the bacon that the keto diet would probably have. Allow for. Right. Uh, instead, you're swapping that out for plant-based proteins, nuts, seeds, those- oh, Artichokes, yeah. broccoli, right? There's, There's actually protein in vegetables. So yeah. you, you get it through the vegetables that you eat as well as nuts and seeds and things like that. People, people say to me all the time, but Owen, how do you get your protein in? And I, I say to them, first of all, you're eating way too much protein. Okay, never in the history of mankind have we had protein for breakfast, protein for lunch, a protein bar at the gym, and then a protein-based dinner. And here's the thing, in your, in, in your body, protein, an over-ingestment of protein turns into sugar through a process called gluconeogenesis. Okay, I think I said that right. But excess protein turns into sugar, which fuels cancer. First of all, the average American eats way too much protein. And when you take your average daily amount, 70 grams or, or whatever, it's very easy to get that and more from plant-based sources. The second part of, of that is as a cancer patient, you're gonna actually wanna read Keto for Cancer because she gives you a formula for how much protein you should be eating. If you have cancer, then you should be eating less protein, even plant-based protein. Because if you eat too much plant-based protein, your body turns it into sugar. So you wanna have those numbers right and then you wanna plan meals accordingly. But there's a lot of protein in artichokes, there's protein shakes, vegan protein shakes at Costco. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of ways to get your protein. Yes, and, and there are ways to make this easier. As a matter of fact, in another video that we'll link uh, in here is our video on remove and replace. And what yeah. we do is we show you a process to help you be able to transition from your the diet that you're used to over in a way that doesn't take too much real estate in your mind where you're constantly having to wonder, what do I need to eat? What do I eat? What do I eat? There's a system for laying it out so that you can just go and eat and you don't have to think about it. Yeah. So watch that video. We've done a lot. We've done a lot of recipe videos too on how to eat keto vegan. And it's like, we like to say it's easy now, but, it was but in the beginning, you know, we didn't have a YouTube channel that we could go to and, and have all of these questions. And that's why we're creating this to make that process easier here for you so yeah. you don't have to go through all of the stumbling that we did to get here. Now there's lots of Instagram accounts and there's lots of cookbooks on a plant-based keto, like there's plenty of people. In fact, we're making a cookbook called Keto Vegan Cancer Killer, but there's lots of books that you can get. We'll put links to them down below. Buy them, experiment with the recipes. The, the trick with keto vegan diet is, is finding foods that you like and then eating them until you're sick of them. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Okay. But once you have those recipes, they're delicious. They really are. And that brings us to our third diet plan, which is a kind of controversial, but it is the number one absolute best thing that I have ever done. And if you listen to uh, so many cancer survivors, it's the big, it's the number one thing that, that they've done. And so I want to, I want to tell you a story. Um, in November, I got a CT scan for my cancer and uh, it showed that my tumors had grown a little. And that was frustrating. Then I went to a fasting clinic and I fasted for seven days with, with only water uh, under medical supervision in a cancer center where, where they do this 
for that's what they do is they take cancer patients and they fast them into remission. Um, I did seven days and in seven days, my tumor shrunk by 30%. And so the third diet plan that cancer patients everywhere need to consider immediately is fasting. That's gonna come in a lot of different ways. One is including intermittent fasting throughout your week. Another is including fasting mimicking diets. And another one would be like a quarterly longer fast, more like the one that Owen Yeah, like had. medical fasts. Take for example, Dr. Alan Goldhammer at True North Health Center in California. One of his patients with stage four terminal lymphoma was told nothing they could do by the, the, the hospital, told nothing she could do. She did a fast for 21 days and came out in remission. Now, fasting is so, so key, and you need to be learning about fasting for cancer. We'll put some links uh, down below to Dr. Eric Berg, who is on Instagram, and he's on YouTube, and he talks a lot about fasting for cancer. We'll put links as well to Dr. Thomas Seyfried, who talks about fasting for cancer. And we'll also put some links to Dr. Walter Longo and a few of the other fasting experts in this, this, in this country. But let's, let's take a look at, at what fasting is. Cancer is not a genetic disease, okay? Cancer is a metabolic disease. It's your metabolism. It's the way that your body turns food into skin and cells and stuff, right? Only our bodies, your body, my body, we take food and our body turns it into cancer because we have a metabolic disorder. Okay, so here's what happens. When you fast, you're no longer feeding the cancer. Right, so the carbohydrates, the protein, the fat, you, all that you get you in your food are now done you're because you're not off, eating. You're cutting off all the pathways. Plus, you're destroying, it's, the tumor itself is starving to death. So, you know, you're 200 pounds, your tumor is four ounces. Who do you think dies first? Your tumors die first. Okay, now there's more that we could talk about, like this process of autophagy that happens when you fast. Like your body does this radical cleanup when you're not eating. And so we've talked about intermittent fasting where you could immediately start doing like 12 hours a night, no eating, right? So from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., you don't eat. That's just like a basic good really night's sleep. First, first easiest way to do but it. But a 12-hour fast every night would do wonders for your immune system. I do currently an 18-6. So I fast for 18 hours a day from like 7 p.m. at night. So I eat dinner, I stop eating, and that mostly, I, I might grab like a cashew, you know, or whatever, like I sneak a little bit, but you know, 7 p.m. and then I don't eat again until what, like 1 p.m. Right, and that then from I eat from one to six. I eat vegetables and fat, shakes healthy fats, and fats and, and stuff. And then at 7:30 p.m., I, I stop eating. And you know, intermittent fasting is is wonderful. I break that up with monthly fasts, where I'll do like a three or a five day fast in my basement. You, you, you know, I mean, it's a it's a downstairs man cave kind of thing. My wife takes care of the kids, and I'm not starving. In fact, five days is kind of like no problem. In fact, the third day of fasting the is, hardest. is after that third day, you, I feel like a million bucks. I, it's, it's, it's actually pretty cool. And so I wanna encourage you to learn more about fasting. And if you're really concerned about cancer, start fasting right now. Do a 24 hour fast and clean out your immune system. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to, to watch the videos by Eric Berg, by Mindy Peltz, by Walter Longo, uh, by, by these uh, Dave Asprey, these fasting experts that can provide you with more resources that will help you fast in a way that will kill your cancer exponentially. So now, what do you eat after your fast? What kind of recipes should you follow? All of those questions right. I'm sure can you're you, having. Can you drink chicken broth and lemon juice and cayenne pepper? Can I do the cayenne pepper lemonade fast or whatever? Right. right, so I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of questions in this channel. We take you with us on our journey to beat cancer. So subscribe, and there's also a link below to our Facebook group. Yeah, and if you have questions about your cancer, you wanna share your journey, you just want someone to talk to about this, join us in the Facebook group, ask your questions. It's me and my wife and there's a, a lot of our friends are there, our family members, plus other people who have already beaten cancer and want to help, want to help others. So use the Facebook group, become a part of our community and share your questions and uh, keep watching these videos and keep learning about how you can build an anti-cancer life.